You've spoken to us multiple times about what TDK Goodness means to you, including in our Portfolio Summit. One aspect of TDK Goodness is the synergies that are enabled with our parent company, TDK. Could you explain what that partnership means to you? So the partnerships with TDK have, exist on multiple levels. TDK Ventures has been able to facilitate conversations that Faction's been able to have with the parent TDK divisions that build components that allow us to move faster. While we are technically a software company at our core, leveraging some of the core TDK technologies allows us to bring our technology to vehicle partners much faster by using some of the things that exist within the TDK portfolio globally. Faction enables L2L3 teleoperations. Could you explain how TDK partnership enables you to get into OEMs faster and also bring your technology to the market faster? So Faction's system is essentially what we call supervised autonomy, which combines autonomous technology with remote human teleoperators to handle scenarios where the vehicles might need a little extra help. By working with TDK business groups, we're incorporating some of the technologies that TDK has developed that allows us to put our technology into our vehicle partners systems much faster um, than if we had to develop everything ground up. One of the TDK business groups that you have partnered with is Trusted Positioning Inc. based out of Canada. Their software solutions enable sensor fusion across multiple platforms, including GNSS, Magnetic, and Inertial, to enable location positioning. Could you explain how this partnership with TPI enables you to get to the market faster, and what does this partnership bring to you? So Faction's partnership with TDK Trusted Positioning is one of our most exciting partnerships. It allows us to know exactly where the vehicles are located, whether you might be outside or even inside parking structures, underground, in tunnels, and situations where you really need to know exactly where this vehicle is positioned. It not only gives us an ability to operate faster and work more reliably, but it adds a whole nother level of safety for our vehicle systems to be able to use the TPI system in conjunction with the other sensors and components on the vehicle. I wanted to uh, talk about the safety aspect and the reduction in risk in this collaboration with uh, Trusted Positioning Inc. On the technology side, how does the collaboration with TPI enable you to reduce risk in GNSS denied areas and bring L2, L3 autonomy to these areas with otherwise it would be difficult to operate it? So one of the biggest advantages of using the TPI system is it allows us to trust and verify everything on the vehicle. And the fact that it's not just a simple GPS system, but it also takes data from all the other sensors on the vehicle, it allows us to have multiple inputs and then also compare the output from something like the TPI system to what you might get from standard GPS. And so it really increases the level of safety on these vehicles far beyond what people think of simple positioning on the vehicle. I also want to talk about risk from a business perspective. How does collaboration with a larger corporation like TDK enable you to reduce your business and getting to the market risks? Yeah, excellent question. So one of the most important things that Faction looks at when we incorporate technologies into our platform is looking for things that we can scale with. Faction is not about building another autonomy research project, but we're building products. And really what that means is when you look at a vehicle, we need automotive grade, we need industrial grade components, and being able to work with the support of companies like TDK that can supply components that are in a very high quality as well as production ready status allows us to move that much faster when we incorporate these technologies into our partner vehicles. So how will the collaboration with the different TDK business groups that you've worked with Trusted Positioning Inc., Invensense, and even TDK R&D enable you to bring a first-to-market uh, product combining Faction's unique innovation along with the solutions that are offered by TDK? Well, one of the most important aspects of building driverless technology is the sensors you use to have the vehicle perceive the world. And TDK is in a very unique position because TDK really focuses on building some core components that we can rely on. So for example, the InventSense products, trusted positioning, even the WheelSense products that allow us to know what's happening with the dynamics of a vehicle, getting access to these technologies allows us to do our job better, but also allows us to scale faster. And so TDK builds a lot of these core components. They're really absolutely critical to our success in the future. How do these partnerships enable you to get to the market faster? And how does it reduce business risk and stand out amidst other competitors 
that may be trying to emulate you. So one of the important parts, as I've mentioned before with Faction, is that we're about building production driverless systems, not another research project. So when we think about the components we select, they have to be at the right uh, scale for production where we know we can get them cost effectively and get them into our vehicle partners quickly and easily. And that's where we really focus on working with partners such as the TDK business units that allow us to move faster by using stuff that is fully developed for scale. Ayn, could you explain how the collaborations with TDK business groups and your own unique technology enable supervised driving when L4, L5 is not for, ready for prime time yet? So there's a fundamental philosophical difference in how we approach driverless technology from some of the legacy companies that were chasing this level five, 100% artificial intelligence model. We believe in building essentially robot driving systems that humans can assist on occasion. And by making the smart technology choices to make it right size for the vehicles, but also scalable, it allows us to get to market much faster than being gated for some of the technologies that you know, may or may not be developed fully in the next five to 10 years. And so working with the TDK business groups that provide production ready components and production ready technologies, it allows us to move into the market much faster than being yet another autonomous research project. Thank you so much, Ayn. This was a pleasure talking to you and we hope that this collaboration will go to a really fruitful, deployed first to market solution very soon. Thanks, Keith. Excited to have you here at Faction as well. Thank you. Good morning, Chris. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Could you introduce yourself and your company? Yeah, good morning, Gita. I'm, I'm Chris Goodall. I'm the president of Trusted Positioning Inc., which is a TDK group company. Um, I was a co-founder of Trusted Positioning uh, before we became part of TDK, and now we are a software division of TDK. As someone who has been through this journey as a startup founder and one that was later acquired by a large corporation, uh, tell us how you see collaborations between uh, portfolio companies like Faction and uh, large corporations bring value to both the corporation and uh, the startups. Yeah, I, th I think the collaboration comes from really the differences in, in the companies, right? And uh, where they're coming from, um, but not always where they're going. They, a lot of times they're going in the same directions, but where they're coming from is very different. Um, very different worlds. Uh, you know, running a startup company uh, from the ground up, trying to, trying to create energy out of nothing, so to speak, is, is quite difficult. But also, in a big company, trying to change and disrupt is very difficult. So I think that's where the two companies can really help each other um, and, and benefit from each other, as long as they're working both in the same direction. How does working with a startup help a mothership like TDK, which may be more focused on immediate requirements such as immediate market value or immediate revenue? Yeah, so TDK is obviously focused on its customers, its quality, um, delivering uh, what it does well and what it's done well over decades. So to go into a new area that has significant risk, uh, significant technology barriers, is something that they can do in a couple different ways. Uh, of course, they can do that internally, but I think the, the amount of resources that they might put towards that would be less than, than, than a startup does. And as a startup goes in those directions, they certainly put more, um, more emphasis on execution, urgency, uh, and, and ultimately it comes down to risk taking. So that, that's, I think, where a startup differentiates itself from a large company. Both you and your team at Trusted Positioning Inc. have been very uh, proactive in collaborations with TDK Ventures portfolio companies. You worked with Under and now you're working with Faction. Tell us about your experience working with TDK Ventures portfolios, what you see as benefits, what has been uh, aha moments, what has been really pleasurable technological interacts. Yeah, well, coming from a, from a startup background ourselves and then integrating into a, a larger company like TDK, we, uh, we appreciate the ability of, uh, of, of these companies to really differentiate and, uh, and create value. And, and the, the two examples you mentioned, both Under and Faction, are actually in, in a similar value chain, but very different companies and very different deliverables that they provide. Uh, in, in Ender's case, they're, they're doing new sensors, new imaging radars, and we're actually integrating their product into ours. Uh, with Faction, we're working a little bit more cohesively and collaboratively at the software level, the integrated level uh, for L2, L3 driving. 
Um, but in general, those aren't the only two companies that we've engaged with, with TDK Ventures. And in general, it gives us the ability to be aware of what's out there, be exposed to new technology, uh, sometimes getting our feet wet in that technology, but not necessarily. Sometimes also seeing what, uh, what we shouldn't get into. So the, the two examples you, you talked about are examples where, of course, we've got deep into in, in the autonomous driving realm. But there's many other examples where we've been exposed to TDK Ventures companies and it's actually helped us to focus our, our roadmaps and, and, and our, um, our ability to move forward with our own products. So Chris, one of your products, Auto, is a technology that enables faction, but you have few other positioning products. Could you walk us through what they are and what their unique capabilities are? Sure, so yeah, our, our focus is actually on inertial at the core. That's what we say now. A lot of people might not know what that means. Inertial are motion sensors, uh, to simplify it. And from motion sensors, we can sense relative movement of a person, a vehicle, an object, whatever. Now that's not really positioning, but it does help positioning because inertial is the only technology that's always on. But then you need to bring in other positioning technologies. Everybody's aware of GPS. But you can also position off of cameras, off of radars, off of lidars. Those are perception positioning systems. Um, then if you go indoors, you can position off of, like I talked about, the, the signals of opportunity, like electromagnetic signals or, or wireless signals. And for us, we, we separate things, of course, from a business into, into different verticals. So we have a venue product that's more geared towards indoors, and then we have an auto product that is more geared towards autonomy. But the interesting thing that's been happening in the last uh, few years is that all of these positioning, location products, whatever you want to call them, we are kind of in the navigation space where we'd be navigating somebody. We'd be telling somebody on a phone or on a screen in a vehicle, you are here, and then that person is taking action. But what's really changing now is that the positioning is getting so good that now machines can take action and do it themselves. So that's really the difference between navigation and autonomy, especially as we go from legacy products like our, our navigation products like track, into indoor positioning products like Venue, and then in the future into our autonomous positioning products. Tell us also about your micromobility products. Yeah, micromobility is an interesting space. Um, the, the, the positioning for micromobility has always been there with GPS, but the use case for micromobility is it has to operate in urban centers where GPS doesn't work very well with multipath and degradation. The other, the other important aspect of micromobility is charging and, and getting those vehicles back to charging stations at the end of the day or the end of the night. And there is a big push in the market to make that autonomous, but I think we're very far away. Maybe because also there's some profitability concerns, uh, whole market concerns in, in micromobility, but it has to happen and it will happen. And, and what we're doing to make that better is we have a positioning product right now that works with GPS and inertial to get a better position to improve the the use case or, or the, the user experience of finding that vehicle or dropping it off at a designated spot. And, and we don't just try and get the vehicle dropped off in the right position. We also fo focus on orientation, parking, orderly parking. That's today. Tomorrow, and when I say tomorrow, this could be five years from now or, or further out beyond some of the existing autonomy applications we're targeting. But autonomy micromobility would be the way of the future, especially for getting back to charging stations in the midterm and potentially in the longer term for actually moving people around. Navigation, by, de by definition, is, um, is, is positioning, it's orientation, it's, it's velocities, but you can derive a lot of information from that. You obviously want to know, was your e-bike or e-scooter parked in the right position, the right orientation, and was it not dropped over while it was being parked? Did somebody just pull that vehicle out, look at the battery level and put it back? Does that vehicle need to be charged? That could be an indication of that. Or you get into consumer vehicles, in that case you want to know, was the vehicle bumped? Was it just wind? Was it picked up on one axle or another for, for theft detection? Um, you do want to also know the impact direction, regardless of how your sensors are mounted on the vehicle. It would be good to know it was hit from the left, it was hit from the right, and how was that vehicle moving at the time of impact. These are all things that we can easily derive from position, velocities, and orientations. So let's talk about your collaboration with our portfolio company, Faction. Faction enables L2, L3 uh, drive-by-wire technology in the micromobility last mile delivery space. 
Tell us how the collaboration with TPI will enable it to be the best uh, logistics last mile delivery in the L2, L3 space that is out there. I think that's what differentiates Faction is they're not trying to get to L4. Um, they're realizing that there is opportunity in, immediately in the L2, L3 space. But the challenge with L2 and L3 is it's, a, it's very much a gray zone in that L1 to L5. L1's easy, you're not doing much. L5's also easy if you can do it. Of course, the technology may not be there, but it's easy because it does everything. In between, you need humans and machines operating together, and that's where it becomes very difficult. There, there's an acceptance within the L2, L3 space that the technology is not there. It's not 100%. And the point is that teleoperators then can take over. But to properly teleoperate, of course, you don't want so many humans. You don't want every driver becoming a teleoperator, so you want to reduce that. So the technology does have to be better. But it also has to give useful information. When you're fusing sensors together, you're not just saying, here's, your, here's our best position, deal with it. We're saying, here's a position, and here's how reliable, how consistent, uh, here's the integrity of that solution. So that's something that we've gone beyond with, with our integration is, of course, we try and get the best position. That, that's our mandate. We always try and get the most accurate, available position at the best affordability. But there's limits. And, and the acceptance of those limits then means that you have to report information so that a company like Faction can then take action on their vehicle. They know when, when to stop it. They know what to do when they stop it. It helps them improve teleoperate, and it, it ultimately it helps them to reduce teleoperation on the road to L4. Could you elaborate on the risk reduction aspect a little bit, both from a technology standpoint and also from a entering the market standpoint? Yeah, so again, this kind of gets back to the big company uh, startup uh, collaboration ideas. So from, from a corporate view, of course, Faction is a startup. They're willing to take those risks and get these vehicles moving autonomously. And, uh, and, and that, that's risk reduction for TDK so that we can get our technology integrated in with a company, get it on the road, see the results, and see how we need to pivot so that we can keep the TDK customers happy that already exist while at the same time delivering disruptive new technology. And we can pivot quickly with them as well. From a technology viewpoint, like I discussed, there's, there's certainly ways to reduce the risk uh, for faction, that's of course trying to give them a better and better position, better orientation, better velocities, but also telling them here is the integrity of that solution, and that's that's a key point. So, could you talk about the navigation in GNSS denied areas? Yeah, so in GNSS denied areas, which is uh, actually many of the areas except for connectors between cities, if you think about any urban city, any tall building, for GPS or any GNSS system to work properly, you need a direct line of sight to a satellite in the sky. If you look up at the sky and you can't see the stars or see the clouds, then you're likely not going to be seeing GNSS satellites. That's when your positioning can go from centimeter level to meter or even tens of meters of error with GNSS. So GNSS itself is not a very good technology. It may be useful on connector roads and highways, such as some of the lane keeping assist systems right now that integrate with GNSS and cameras. But when you get into urban environments, you get into anything underground, if you can't look up and see a clear view of the sky with you know, 60 degrees around you, then you're likely going to have very poor GNSS. That's where you need inertial sensors. That's where you need perception sensors. You need cameras, you need radars, et cetera. So from a technology viewpoint, if, uh, if you're expecting GNSS to work to a centimeter or decimeter level for autonomous uh, vehicle positioning, that can work in open sky where you have a clear line of sight to the satellites above you but it's not gonna work at that positioning accuracy in an urban environment. It's not gonna work in an underground parkade, in a tunnel. Pretty much anywhere where you as a human can't see the sky, neither can the GNSS receivers. So these vehicles need lane level positioning. They need sub 30 centimeters with some buffer around that. So in that case, you have to integrate other sensors. You have to get, integrate inertial. You have to integrate perception sensors like cameras, like radars, and maybe even like LIDARs. Um, but that, that's really where GNSS just falls apart. And it is obviously a useful sensor, it's an outdoor sensor, but it cannot be used on its own in those environments. Chris, tell us how TPI and Faction are better together, and how does this partnership help TPI? 
Yeah, so, so TPI and faction are at similar levels of the value chain in the, in the autonomous driving stack, at least from a long-term perspective with faction. We're actually both software companies, uh, software as a service company. And, and that's, that's really, as, as we're looking forward for our auto product, that, that's what we're looking to achieve, is we're trying to transition from a per unit navigation device uh, model into a software as a service model. And Faction, I believe, is also looking at that. They're looking at building these vehicles, doing the teleoperation, but in the longer term, they also want to provide these software as a service uh, platforms so that their customers can, can grow and extend uh, into, into new applications, new autonomy. Uh, teleoperation, of course, will be a, a start of that. But as we go forward, it's really looking at the future of autonomy together as software as a service companies. How does the collaboration with Faction enable you to access the larger ecosystem and that channel partners, and how does that help TPI business? Yeah, so the alignment between both TPI and Faction is, is strong. We're not only aligning at the SaaS level, but we're also aligning in the fact that Faction is, is developing a hardware platform that can service its immediate needs with its immediate vehicles, and then in the future go beyond to other vehicle platforms. It could be a three-wheel platform they have now, it could be four-wheel, who knows, maybe in the future it might even be micromobility. It's been a pleasure talking to you, Chris, and we at TDK Ventures have been always very appreciative of your motivation and interest in collaborating with a lot of our portfolio companies. And I think this can serve as a wonderful example for TDK, various different business groups to also collaborate with our portfolio companies and bring first to market solutions uh, to the ecosystem. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, Wamsi. It's a pleasure to have you with us here today at Faction. Could you introduce yourself? Thanks, Geeta. I'm Vamsi Gangamala. I'm Marketing Director and Technical Lead for Industrial Business Unit within TDK Inventions. I've been with TDK Inventions for 11 years, starting my career as a uh, principal engineer, slowly grew up along the ranks, now becoming the Technical Lead and also the Marketing Director for the Industrial Business Unit. Tell us about uh, your ongoing collaboration with Faction and also with uh, TPI in enabling Faction's technologies. This is one of these rare opportunities where different TDK entities are able to collaborate together and create a vertical solution that would enable driverless cars. InventSense drives the initial measurement unit technology that underpins the uh, navigation. TPI takes the underlying technology that Inventions provides and expand it out to scenarios where the GPS is denied. And Faction, when it deploys its vehicle in real world, they can handle the GPS denied scenarios, creating a seamless application for the vehicle. It was a pleasure talking to you, Wamshi, and we really appreciate your uh, initiative and in collaborating with our TDK Ventures portfolio companies. And we hope that there'll be many more such opportunities for InventSense to collaborate with our portfolio companies. Thanks, Geeta. Thanks for the opportunity to be here.